David Ligori with Ligori Drag Racing. And I'm gonna show you how to get a nice looking two-step with a fuel injected motorcycle today. In this log, we'll go over the RPM, the ignition timing, and the ignition cut. And we'll also go over the two-step rev limiter settings. So what I typically do to get a pretty smooth two-step is I pull a lot of timing out of it and I let it bang the ignition cut a lot and it keeps the RPM under control. So you can see here under the advanced side and if you don't have the advanced on your screen you need to go to advanced map options RPM settings custom and then go back to two-step rev limiter and advanced will be there and you also need this if you're not using a two-step if you're just revving up the throttle dumping the clutch and uh, whacking the throttle so this is very important here the above limiter rpm progression i usually always put at one or up to 50 sometimes and what that means is every time the limiter the RPM goes above the limiter by one RPM. So in this case, 5,001 RPMs, it will do a maximum cut level of the ignition to 90%. So it cuts 90% of ignition that much during the two-step. And this is what I typically like to see here. I like to see a lot of cut and I drop the ignition timing down. You can have cut for a very longer time. So like you can see these are longer here, but you can have them even longer. And what even longer means is it's staying above this RPM too much. So if you have a long bar here on your graph of ignition cut, under two step, then it means it's staying above 5,001 RPMs. So to get a lot of cut like this, I drop the ignition timing way down. You can see that this ignition timing is set at zero degrees. Now I usually start out at about eight degrees. If I start out at eight degrees and it shows long bars down here, then I keep dropping the timing, dropping the timing. I'll go from like eight to five to two to zero. I even go into the negatives. I have bikes running out there at negative five, negative eight degrees of timing in order to control the two-step. Fuel enrichment. I use fuel enrichment. If the bike is throwing a lot of flame, you usually have to give it more fuel because they're lean pops, usually. You can get it to where there's too much fuel and it's loading up and it's backfiring as well. Minimum TPS to activate ignition retard and fuel enrichment. On this log, on this uh, particular map and log file, I have it enabled at 20%. So what that does is it does not drop the timing until we are at 20%. So you can see there 20.3, we are dropping the timing down. And what will happen if you don't have this set up and you drop the timing when you uh, start to get on the throttle here, it'll actually dip and the RPM won't rise as quick right here. So we can, we see that we started the two-step because we're ignition cutting, but we haven't dropped the timing yet. If you drop the timing too quick, there will be a dip in the RPM right there. Sometimes I set that uh, TPS to activate, sometimes at 50. It depends on how hard or how slow you ramp into the throttle. If you go on it fast, 
If you just whack the throttle real quick, go up to the two-step RPM and 100% throttle, then you don't need much in there. If you roll on it very, very slowly and then bump in, you typically need to have this set up. Um, I've seen it anywhere from 20%, uh, 50%, 60%, and it's just to control that little dip there when the two-step starts. Start compensation X RPM before. So we are starting compensation at 500 RPMs before 5,000. So at 4,500 RPMs, we are starting the two-step process. We are starting to cut ignition and we are starting to uh, see things happen in motion as far as pulling timing, things like that depending on where our minimum TPS is to activate. Two-step rejection after launch. So if you're afraid of hitting the two-step button again after the launch, or if you're running a clutch bike and you need to pull the clutch in for some reason, then you can reject it after a launch. So. There's a rejection time and a rejection RPM. Reject when above a certain RPM and reject duration of seven seconds. Or, you know, for example, that's, you can put it at nine seconds, you can put it at 10 seconds. You can activate the two step or clutch button off of ground or 12 volts. Ground is preferred. In this video clip, I'm going to be showing you how to not use a two-step, but still gain a validated launch. So on the two-step rev limiter screen, you want to use by input sensor. Use the drop-down box to click TPS. Two-step activation value. I typically set this pretty high, usually around 75% and activated below. So any time that the throttle position is below 75%, it thinks that the bike is on the two-step. So we have an RPM target of 2,700 RPMs, and this is typically just what you rev the bike up a little bit. Um, to bring the launch RPMs up or under. So if you launch at 4,000 RPMs, you have to have it below 4,000 RPMs. Start compensation doesn't mean anything on this. Fuel enrichment, you don't want any fuel enrichment and you want the fixed timing to be whatever you wanna launch at. So if you want to launch at full timing, say your full timing is 34 degrees, then you want to make sure that 34 degrees is here. You don't want to pull a bunch of timing unless you're having traction problems or you uh, just can't get off the starting line, something like that. This is extremely important here. Ignition cut on two-step and burnout. Maximum level 0%. You do not want it to cut because you do not want a two-step. So we are tricking the two-step into thinking that it's on with throttle position. And we are not cutting anything because we are at 0%. Here's a log showing. So he's bringing the RPMs up to 3,300. And that is above 2,700. That's what we need. You need this set below what you're launching at. And you can see the blue line is two-step. So at about 75% shows off. It goes off. Two-step on, two-step off. 
and we can see the two-step come back on here because he goes below 75% again. So this is where two-step rejection can come into play. And I believe after this log, I put time-based on there so that it didn't do that again. Because what it does, it will start your timers over again once you go above 75% again. So it'll restart the timer. You can see that the timer here is zero because it restarted. It should, zero should be here because this is where he launched. And it went through and it auto shifted fine. If it was a nitrous bike, it would have reset the timer here at zero. And typically that's not what you want. So uh, two step rejection is very uh, useful in this case when you have to lift off the starting line because of a wheelie or if it spins or something like that. I believe this bike was wheeling. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, we can see that it really spun there. So it did spin a lot. This is drive shaft RPM. So what a validated launch means is you're at RPM target of 2700 or more you're over 50 percent throttle and you're on the two-step so regardless we are making this work because we have the two-step activation value above 50 percent at 75 percent and we are launching above the 2700 so that gives us a validated launch. With a two-step button, using a validated launch, same kind of characteristics. 5,000 RPMs, it has to see that. It has to see the two-step button pushed in, and you have to be above 50% throttle when you launch. And that will uh, create a validated launch, and will start your timers. It will start your timers. It will auto-shift for you. Anything um, that you have going on down track, it'll do. You do not need an auto shift switch because it knows when you're launching off of a validated launch. You don't need a nitrous switch. You can have it always enabled because it knows when you're launching. Um, you don't need any kind of necessary switches to turn things on, which is very, very nice. You don't... How many times have you gone up there with auto shift and forgot to hit the switch? I know I've done it. Not a lot, but I've done it. Lost some races. So I hope this is a good explanation of the two-step. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hit the like, subscribe, share, please. Thank you.